Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint some loose watercolour alliums and have a few of our favourite bumblebees buzzing around. So grab your paints and let's get started. So alliums are amazing sort of pom-pom flowers that grow really tall um, and I guess we could almost approach it in a slightly similar way to a dandelion clock. So I've done a, a curved stem and I'm just going to do a curve that crosses that with a little bit more there and then we'll pop one in there as well. So we're going to have two, we'll have, we'll have a third one there as well. And of course we'll be putting in some bumblebees afterwards. But I'm going to paint these quite loose. I've got a size 2 brush and some green gold here. And I'm just waking that up. And we'll get a little bit of sap green in the mix, but they are quite a yellowy green, the stems. And I'm going to just swoosh, swoosh the brush from top to bottom, bottom to top, whatever you fancy. Sometimes it's quite daunting to do a, a single stroke, so if you want to do one or two more to just get yourself comfortable there, that's fine. It's quite a sort of sturdy, thick stem, but if you notice I'm taking my painted stem beyond the bottom curve there, up to where my pencil line left, because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint a whole load of sort of starburst lines coming out from that point and I want to create a sort of circular shape, a sort of pom-pom, so I've just done some very faint dashes there to give myself a guide and I'm going to use my size um, zero rigger brush, a rigger brush is a really uh, long thin bristle brush and I'm going to put hardly any paint on the brush there and I just want a whole load of stems doesn't matter if you get a lot of water on there this is very loose and we're not going to see a huge amount of this so I'm just going to paint a lot of lines coming out and fill up this circle so I'm just filling up the circle and everything coming out from the anchoring point down there. Now whilst this is still wet, I'm just going to paint, start painting in some of the delicate flowers just around the edge. Now I've got some cobalt violet here, but a purple colour could easily be mixed up from cobalt blue and permanent rose and I'm just now going to paint in with my four tenths brush um, some sort of half faced flowers around the edge of this circle. Now the allium stems will probably have largely dried by now but it doesn't actually matter if they haven't because we're painting this in a very loose style. It doesn't matter too much if things bleed into each other but what is important is that we paint in a fairly dilute style. And I'm just using the tip of my brush to create the little petal shapes. And an allium flower, well it has six petals, but as I said we're not going to be seeing every single petal from the side. This is just also a really handy way to help you establish that shape of the flower before you go in and fill in the rest. So I've gone round the other two and just repeated the steps I did for the first one and now I can go back to the first and start putting in the next layers. So we're going to work our way gradually inwards and we're also going to just build up a little bit more concentration with the flowers each time. So uh, my flowers can also be just a little bit more open-faced 
So I'm just going to go round and overlap a little bit with the ones I painted previously and just keep on coming inwards in concentric circles. It's important that your previous flowers have dried by this point. Um, so just if you paint in a few, then that means you can work on one flower whilst the others are drying. I try and get it so that they're not all completely in line, one in front of the other. I like to have them sort of in the gaps, overlapping with each other, but it's not always possible the way it works out. But you can see already, just from putting these ones in, we're starting to get a slightly sort of rounded flower shape for the for the sort of spherical allium flower as a whole. The other thing is if you look closely at the little flowers they do have um, green centers but I'm going to leave painting those in until we've actually got most of our flowers in. We don't want that green to sort of muddy the purple. So I'm going to continue with sort of doing one one lap around the flower and then move on to one of my other alliums whilst that one dries and just keep going. This is one of those paintings that you can just enjoy taking your time over. It's not one for rushing because there are all these flowers to paint in. But saying that, as soon as these circles start to shrink actually you find you get round them much quicker than the first two layers. What I'm quite enjoying is seeing the very faint green from the stems just creeping in behind the petals and really looking like there's green sort of just lurking beneath and behind everything. For the last few flowers in the middle, you can go for a more concentrated colour. And it might be that you're just now filling in gaps where you can, rather than actually still doing circles. And then I might just do the odd little brush stroke. But there we go. So that's our main bulk of the allium done. And now it's a case of just doing a little bit of detail, even though this is still a, a loose painting. So I've got some sap green here, just coming out from the base, a little bit of shadow. And then we need to decide which stem is in front of the other. Decided this one is. So just using the sap green to paint over. Of course, we could use the sap green to sort of create a shadow effect for the other one as well underneath. But the other thing we can do is just use a little bit of Prussian blue here, which is looking very dark. 
just with a little bit of the purple maybe just to capture a few sort of shadowy edges of these allium flowers so just picking up some of the petals on the bottom edge just helps give them a little bit more depth so we'll finish these off and then it's time to add some bees I'm just taking a little bit of the sap green and green gold mix I want to just dot some of these more central flowers so again it is all about just finding little places to add detail in this loose controlled style that actually all adds up to quite a detailed painting in the end. I added a little bit of the shadow I'd put on around the edge of the plants to just underneath on the stems as well. Okay, and now we're going to draw a bumblebee in here because I think that's a really nice position for one. So for those of you who haven't already seen my uh, honeybee, no, bumblebees and lavender tutorial, essentially what we do is we draw a, a croissant shape, a rough kind of curve like that, allowing in space for the wings and essentially I'm looking for sections a bit like a croissant as well so that is the kind of shape we want for our bumblebee and I'm going to whoops oh dear I'm going to mix up some cadmium yellow and I'm going to paint that in my size 2 brush and what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by painting these sections so one there and one there and I like to just make a slightly more orangey yellow mix so mixing a bit of cadmium orange and cadmium yellow together and just dropping in a tiny bit there. And now I'm going to take my shadow mix that I had very faintly here, which was a bit of French ultramarine, tiny bit of burnt sienna, and I'm actually going to mix that into some yellow over here. So I've just got a slightly grey, murky yellow colour. So I'm going to fill in the base there. Now I just need to let that dry for about a minute. I just want it to have seeped in a tiny bit more because we're going to add in our black bands, which of course are very distinctive of our bee, but we don't want the black to travel too far and dominate the shape. So I've got my Mars black here and I've just made it really quite dilute. And in a few seconds, I'm going to just paint it in the gaps but we'll just let that dry. So it's just a little bit of drying time that's allowed me to paint in this black and I'm getting exactly sort of what I want is just a very slow blend of colour which is a tiny bit of a bleed because that it allows us to achieve that kind of fluffy bee shape um, without it going completely over and uh, out of control. So now I'm getting a more concentrated black on my uh, 3 tenths brush and I'm going to begin just by dabbing in a little bit of a baseline colour there. I'm also going to drop in 
some legs by just squishing the brush down from the tip and creating these funny little legs and we'll get one in there as well. And now I'm going to draw this more concentrated black up into the body of the bee. That previous layer of black has just allowed a sort of baseline for the black to not travel too far and now I can sort of turn it into a bit of a head. A little bit of a blank space there. Some little antennae. And then last off, we need a wing or two. So I'm going to get my larger size two brush again and the shadow mix here. And just bring the brush down, allowing some of that color to blend into it. But there we have our alliums and the bee. I just need to let it dry, rub out the pencil and we'll have a lovely painting. Having just rubbed that all out with my putty rubber, my kneadable eraser, I can do one last tiny little vein on the wings. And there we go. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you're getting on. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye!